Sepsis is the body's overwhelming response to an infection. That infection could be a virus, a bacteria, uh, even a fungus. Any source of infection uh, can lead to sepsis. And different people respond to infections in different ways. Two people will get the exact same infection. One person may be down for three days, feel a little punky, uh, get better on their own, and go back to work. And another person with the exact same infection ends up in the intensive care unit in multi-organ failure and shock uh, with a long hospital stay. So what are some aspects of earlier intervention that will help improve the outcomes in sepsis and help decrease hospital stay and save lives? Uh, first and foremost is diagnosis, okay? And, and getting somebody to, uh, to either medical care or calling their doctor and having that suspicion that, you know what, something isn't right, okay, without letting it linger on for hours uh, or days, uh, and sometimes weeks, um, uh, without a diagnosis. Once you've diagnosed someone's sepsis, um, we do do a number of tests. We measure the amount of acid in their blood. We measure different uh, metabolites in their blood. We look for sources of infection in your lung and in your urine. Um, and then when we've done that evaluation, we will generally give you fluid, most often through an IV, but you certainly can't do it by mouth. So you know, make sure that when you are suspicious that someone is, is sick, uh, make sure you control their fever and at home the things you can do um, while you're you know getting them prepared to you know to go to the doctor is make sure they drink a lot of fluids make sure you control their um, their fever the other important issue is getting antibiotics so once we've identified a source of infection uh, the, the best evidence shows that appropriate and early antibiotics definitely save lives and definitely definitely improve outcomes in patients and additionally, I think we're better at identifying it. So patients that you know, may have died in the hospital of, um, of a mild urinary tract infection or they had uh, kidney failure uh, 20 years ago, we're actually gonna be able to diagnose them today and recognize, you know what, that's sepsis, that's severe sepsis, and you know, this is something we need to treat aggressively, and we would identify and diagnose that patient differently today than we did 20 years ago. Between eight and 900,000 people develop severe sepsis every year in the United States, and about 250 to 300,000 people die, okay? That's an extraordinarily high case fatality rate. Um, we spend upwards of $16 billion uh, as a country treating severe sepsis and septic shock uh, at every stage. Sepsis kills more people than HIV, breast cancer, and heart disease combined. The, the easiest way to avoid it is to be very conscious uh, of the fact that everyone is a potential victim, okay? You can't be healthy enough or young enough or strong enough. Everyone is susceptible. So when you see warning signs in yourself or a family member or a friend where, gosh, I know they had a cold or, you know, they had a fever the other day and now they're not acting well or, you know, one of those red flags pops up, um, be really cognizant and be an appropriate advocate for yourself or your family member and to, to go to them and say, listen, maybe we should get this evaluated, go to an urgent care, uh, go to your primary care doctor, if you have to go to the to emergency department, but there are options 24 seven where you can get evaluated and don't let that linger on um, until irreparable damage is done.